Alright, so we are on Unit 2, Lesson 4, Proportional Relationships and Equations. Our learning goal is let's write equations describing proportional relationships. So we've been doing proportional relationships in tables, and now we're going to take it to an equation. And it's really very, very simple. So we're starting out with a number talk on division, and they're asking us to find each quotient. And remember, a quotient is the answer in a division problem mentally. So 645 divided by 100. So I remember that when you divide by 10, you move the decimal place over one place. When you divide by 100, you move it over two places. So I would say that the answer is 6 and 45 hundredths, or 6.45. Then they're asking us to take the 645 and divide it by 50. So instead of dividing it into 100 different groups, we're only doing 50 different groups. So that means I would have 12.9 in each group. Okay, then 48 and 6 tenths divided by 30. Well, if I look at this and I can do 3 into 4, 8, 6, so 3 goes into 4 once, with 1 left over, 3 goes into 18 6 times, and 3 goes into 6 2 times, and then I just have to decide where the decimal point goes. Well, it started out in one place, and then I'm dividing it by 10, so it's going to end up here at 1.62. Then we got 48.6 divided by x. Hmm. Well, divided by any number. So 48.6 divided by x. I could write it like that. All right. So a recipe says that two cups of rice will feed six people. Oh, we've seen this problem before. Complete the table as you answer the questions. Be prepared to explain your reasoning. So how many people will one cup serve, three, 12, 43, and X cups? So we're gonna go back to our table and we're gonna do our Y over X again. This is X, this is Y. We don't have anything here, but here we have six over two. So that equals three. So that remember that's our constant of proportionality. So to go from here to here, I'm going to multiply by 3. Go from here to here, I'm going to multiply by 3. So that will give me 9 times 3 here. That's going to give me 36 times 3 here. Let's see. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12. So 129. And x times 3 will be written as 3x. All right, so we've answered all these questions over here. One cup will be three people. Three cups is nine people. 12 cups is 36. 43 cups is 129. And x cups, any number cups, is going to be three times the number of cups. All right. Okay, number two, a recipe says that six spring rolls will serve three people. Complete the table as you answer the question. Be prepared to explain your reasoning. So once again, I'm going to do my y over x, where this is my x column and this is my y column. All right, so I'm given this relationship right here, so y over x is going to give me one half. So that means my constant of proportionality is one half. So I'm going to multiply each one of these by one half. So half a person is one spring roll. Ten people times one half is going to give me five people. Sixteen gives me eight people. 25 times 1 half is going to give me 12 and a half people. And n number of people, any number of people, I'm going to multiply it by 1 half, so that's going to give me 1 half n. 
So how many people will N spring rolls serve? One half times N. All right. So how does completing this table, how was completing this table different from the previous table? Well, this time we multiplied by a fraction. I think we also ended up with um, not whole numbers all the time. How was it the same? Well, we found the COP, the Y over X, or the unit rate, right here is our unit rate, found the COP, and we multiplied the X column X column by the COP. All right, so now we're going to do Denver to Chicago. Picture didn't come out real good, but you're going to be looking at it on your iPad, so you should be good. All right, so they want us to complete the table, and it says a plane flew at a constant speed. So that tells us we have a proportional relationship. It took the plane 1.5 hours to fly 915 miles. Okay, it looks like they want us to find the speed, which is miles per hour. So we're going to use that same y over x, because this is x and this is y. So we're going to take 915 divided by 1.5, and when we take out our calculator and do that, we get 610. So our speed is 610 miles per hour. Now, because they told us it was at a constant speed, I'm going to put 610 in every single one of these boxes here because the speed is staying constant. So, in one hour, our COP is 610, so that's our multiplier. I'm going to multiply this by 610. That means we go a distance of 610 miles. In two hours, I'm going to take that 610, multiply it by 2, I'm going to go 1,220 miles. In 2.5 hours, same thing, multiply by 610, because I'm going this way, I'm going to get 1,525 miles. And T, any number of hours, I would take and I would multiply it by 610 and the way to write that is 610t. So how far does the plane fly in one hour? 610 hours. How far would the plane fly in t hours? Any number of hours at this speed and we would take the 610 and multiply it by the t. All right. Now it says, if D represents the distance that the plane flies at this speed for T hours, write an equation that relates T and D. All right, so let's go back to this up here. This is T. This is D. Equations are written in the form of Y equals kx, where y is our y column, x is our x column, and k is the constant or the COP. All right, so we want it in the form of y equals kx. So what does y represent? y represents the distance. So I'm going to put that first. The distance equals what was our K? What was our constant? What was our COP? Well, that was 610. So we got 610. And then our X column was the time. So this is the equation. D equals 610T. Now, we can use this equation to answer questions without even using a table by simply plugging in 
this is three hours, and hours is represented by T, time. So D would equal 610 times 3. And 610 times 3, so the distance would be 1830. So the plane would have traveled 1830 miles in 3 hours. Always have to express our answer with units if we're given units. All right, now it says 3.5 hours. So once again, we're going to plug in the T for time. So we're going to use the D equals 610 times 3.5 this time. So if you take out your calculator, you would get D equals 2,135. And what does that mean in this problem? That means the plane traveled 2,135 miles in 3.5 hours. All right, we're gonna skip the are you ready for more? And now we're gonna go to the bread problem again with the honey and the flour. So a baker uses eight tablespoons of honey for every 10 cups of flour to make bread dough. Some days they bake bigger batches and some days they make smaller batches, but they always use the same ratio of honey to flour. So that means it's proportional. So they're asking us to complete the table. So once again, I'm gonna do Y over X. This is the only one I've got, so y over a, x is 10 over 8, and that ends up reducing to 1.25. So now that is our multiplier, that's our COP, so we're going to multiply this by 1.25 and get 1.25 here. 16 times 1.25 is going to give us 20 cups of flour. 30 times 1 and 25 hundredths is going to give us 37 and a half cups of flour. And H, keeping with the same pattern, remember math is all about patterns, this is going to be 1 and 25 hundredths H. Okay, so now they want us to write an equation that relates F and H. Well, this is going to be F and this is going to be H for flour and honey. Remember, this is our X column. This is our Y column. The equation is always in the form of Y equals KX, where that K is our COP. So our COP is right here. This is our COP. So we're going to do Y, and what is Y? Y is the flour. So we're going to say the flour equals, the constant was 1.25, and X is represented by the honey. Okay, so that's our equation. This is saying that the amount of flour we need is 1.25 times the amount of honey we use. So how much flour is needed for 15 tablespoons of honey? Well, that's our H. So we don't know F. We're going to plug it into the formula. We know H is 15. So when we multiply 1.25 times 15, we get F equals 18 and 75 hundredths. Now, what does that mean in terms of this story? 18 and 75 hundredths cups of flour for 15 tablespoons of honey. All right, then they want in about 17 tablespoons of honey. So once again, we're going to go to that equation that we created. F equals 1.25H. Well, this is 17 is honey, so we're going to replace H with 17, so F equals 1.25 times 17. That's going to give us F equals 21.25. 
So in terms of this story, it will take 21 and 25 hundredths cups of flour if we are using 17 tablespoons of honey. Okay? All right, so let's just look over the summary real quick. The table shows the amount of red paint and blue paint to make a certain purple. Now that parts can be any unit for Vi, note that the parts can be any unit. It could be cups, it could be um, gallons, it could be pints. We just know that we mix three of red and 12 of blue to get that purple. Okay, so the last row shows us for any amount R. So the equation for this, now remember, this is X, this is Y. They are using B for blue and R for red. So our equation in the form of Y equals KX, well, we need to figure out the K. Well, we can take any of these. So 12 over 3 equals 4. So this is our COP, our K. So Y is blue, so we get blue equals 4 times X, which is R. So that's where the equation comes from. All right, so if we come over here, we can also look at the relationship the other way around. Well, now we've got blue first and we've got red. So this is X, this is Y. If I do Y over X, I get... 3 over 12, I get 1 fourth. What's the relationship between the 1 fourth and the 4? They are reciprocals of each other. Because I changed the order of this, we're taking the reciprocal of it. So, if we're doing the equation for this, we're going to be in the form of y equals kx once again. But this time, Y is going to be red. So red equals, the constant is 1 fourth, and X is blue. So that's where that equation comes from. So in general, when Y is proportional to X, we can always multiply X by the same number K, the constant of proportionality, to get Y. We can write this much more succinctly, and that means simply, with the equation y equals kx. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed today's lesson, and I will see you on Zoom. If you have any questions, please be, have them ready, and we will do the practice problems together.